What's up YouTube? This is Lizard Day 21 here, and today I'm going to show you how to use the chroma key or green screen filter within Final Cut Pro 10. So this will be the first of my uh, Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials playlist. I will be making a playlist and uploading a few tutorials on how to use Final Cut Pro 10. But this will be the first, and I will also do some on Motion 5. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the chroma key or green screen filter within Final Cut Pro 10. Now I find this to be much easier in Final Cut Pro 10 rather than Final Cut Pro 7. Even though it feels a little more, it feels a little less professional as in Final Cut Pro 7 where you actually use the eyedropper tool to filter out all the green screen. This you kind of just drag and drop the filter on and Final Cut Pro does the rest for you. But it actually saves a lot of time and it does it quite well. So we're going to get started here. I'm actually going to, this is actually the sequence that I showed you before. I'm actually going to delete all this just for the purposes of this video. What you're going to go ahead and do is drag and drop in your footage. I've already set my in points and out points, so that should be good. We're going to go ahead and resize this. And what I did for this is I actually made the razor blade. There we go. Right there. You'll see why I'll do that later on when we're keyframing. And what we're going to go ahead and do is Go ahead and take a look at our video filters. Scroll to the keying tab and drag in the keying filter onto your footage. So there we go. Now you see you got all that uh, green screen. But we still have this problem of all this excess stuff around us. This is where the crop tool comes in handy. So we're going to go ahead and uh, crop all of that out here. Just like so. Be careful not to crop any of the stuff that you want in the green screen. For example, that goes out pretty far, so I don't want to get any of that. And that should be good right there. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is move that and rotate that. So we're going to move that down there, and we're going to go ahead and uh, transform that 270 degrees. So let me type in that number, 270. Perfect. So then we're going to move that up just a little bit, and that's kind of how I liked it right there. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is you're going to drag in anything that you want to be displayed where the green screen was underneath your footage. So in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and use a video generator. In this case, I used the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it in right there. It snapped into place. We're going to trim that because we don't need all that excess footage over there. And we don't need this sort of slug over there. So now that we've got this, we're going to go ahead and we could play this and you will see that's how I did it. But I also added some keyframes in there just for some extra effects. I'm also going to add in some music here. So we're going to go ahead and click the music tabs and you will see I've got Final Cut Pro sound effects. Now these sound effects are actually available for download for free from Apple software just for Final Cut Pro 10. It's about 600 megabytes of royalty free music and it's all pretty good. So I've already selected on the Final Cut Pro sound effects tab. And what I did is I dragged in the boat foghorn sound effect. So I'm going to put that in right there. And you'll see this sound effect kind of drags out and fades out. But I don't really need all that fade. So what we're going to go ahead and do is put a marker here. And we're also going to put a marker here as well as one here. That way I know when I should start keyframing out everything. So the first thing we should key out is the actual fog, the footage that we originally placed in the timeline. So I'm going to put my playhead there, and we're going to go ahead and under the video tab in the inspector, we're going to go ahead and look for, here we go, this one right here. What we're going to go ahead and do, and I'm saying that a lot, is press add a keyframe. And I'm going to make the keyframe last a second. I'm going to add another keyframe and bring down the opacity. I'm going to have to do that the same with the wood, otherwise it just won't work out correctly. So I'm going to find that. That one's all the way up here. Keyframe. One second later. Keyframe. Bring down the opacity. Just like that. And now, last but not least, we have to do the same thing for the audio. The audio is actually a bit easier to do the keyframing for, much more straightforward. All I got to do is, once again, add that keyframe. One more second. 
add another keyframe and we could either move the slider here or we could just take your mouse and drag that all the way down there just like you would in Final Cut Pro 7. So now you will see Final Cut is actually rendering that in the background and I'm going to come back when that's all completely done. Okay, now that Final Cut Pro is done rendering, what we're going to go ahead and do is take out any of this excess um, slug over here as well as the noise. Select that and delete. So now we can move our playhead to, be to the beginning of the clip and press the space bar. So there we go. Now if you feel that the effect, the keyer effect that you dragged in to your footage didn't do a good enough job, you could actually go ahead and adjust all those settings to your own extent over here. I feel like the keyer did a pretty good job, but if you don't feel like it did the job you thought it should do, you can go ahead and adjust all these settings here. But anyway guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to favorite, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.